Hey everybody, it's Wilbitz! We're playing Ace Attorney Investigations, Miles Edgeworth. Oh, the murder, that something something. Then we're just rolling! The return of the great thief, Yetagarasu. Thinking back, everything began on that fateful day, two days ago. Hmm. Two days earlier? So are we going backwards in time from that last case? Reverse wine! It unspilled! Were all those things on this airplane? Yes, everything began high up in the air. 9,000 feet in the air, to be precise. Thank you for flying. I fly airlines. Uh, we are currently experiencing some flight turbulence. We are asking uh, all passengers to please uh, return to their seats and fasten their seatbelts. This is the fanciest airplane I've ever seen! I'm guessing that wasn't wine. It must have been tomato juice. Edgeworth is dead! He died two days ago. He was a ghost that entire first case. I should have seen it coming. He's a ghost vampire robot. <laughs> Why do I feel like I just woke up from a horrible nightmare? I was in coach. <laughs> <laughs> 613. Hmm, guess I was out cold for about 10 minutes. Ha, slight turbulence indeed. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are uh, currently experiencing uh, some slight turbulence. For your safety, uh, we ask that you return to your seats and uh, fasten your seat belts. I suppose turbulence is to be expected on a flight. Ugh. Though admittedly, I'm less than comfortable with anything resembling earthquakes. Oh! What did you just drop? Hmm? What's this? A travel wallet. But it's not mine. How did someone else's travel wallet wind up in my pocket? And I probably shouldn't have just dropped it into all of this blood. What? Mm, my head. Why won't this headache go away? Grabs head, hand comes away, covered in blood. I'll take care of this travel wallet later, or hand it off to an attendant. Uh. Uh, from earthquake-like turbulence to an elevator, my le other least favorite thing. Mm. <laughs> what am I doing hesitating like this? Actually, I know full well why I hesitate. It was when I was still but a young child. Do you really have a fear of elevators? I was caught up in a murder that happened in an elevator. But how long am I going to let my past haunt me? It's just an elevator. I'm a grown man now. I need to behave like one. I'm not scared of elevators. I'm not scared of elevators. I'm not. Uh... Another murder in an elevator. What, what the? What in the world happened? Is there something wrong, sir? I must ask that you please return to your si- Eek! Return to your seek, everyone! He he's dead! Please calm down. We mustn't jump to conclusions without all the facts. What's wrong? Did something happen? Y you you murderer! No, no, you have to wrong. I, it wasn't me. I, no, no, please, no. I know that my, I'm the one to discover them, and I'm holding their wallet and it's covered in blood that I also have my fingerprints on, but I wasn't. <laughs> Already not looking good! Seriously, one seat per side of the aisle, and the aisle is big enough that you could drive a car down it. I want to fly on this airplane. I cannot afford to fly on this airline airplane. Everyone, I am sorry to interrupt, but I have an important announcement. I am one of your flight attendants today, Rhoda Tenero. 
There's a joke there that's gonna hit me in a few minutes. Unfortunately, we have just had a minor accident on this flight. An accident? Don't treat us like we're stupid. I caught a glimpse and it was a m m m m m murder. What? M murder? What's going on with this flight? Heh! <laughs> Everyone, please calm down. There is no reason to panic. Conan O'Brien here, right in first class. These flights will stay on course and make it scheduled landing. We are still currently in the middle of a rough patch of turbulence. So until we are out of this area of turbulence, I ask that you please remain seated. But, but someone was killed, right? I mean, what about the killer? Let me up! He could strike again at any moment! I just can't stop eating in the middle of this! I'm so worried about... Please, there is no need to feel threatened. We have already apprehended the culprit. Um, <laughs> I look like a tape over his mouth. I ask that everyone please remain calm. What the heck is he talking about? Why should we remain calm? My name is Miles Edgeworth. I am a prosecutor and I assure you I am not the killer. Ha! Being a prosecutor doesn't make you incapable of murder, buddy. Ha, ha. I think you'll find that in the past case, the oh, it hasn't happened yet. Well... Now you listen here. I am not the killer. I simply found the body. So you see, however, I am sure that you are the perpetrator of this crime. I swear on my honor as a professional flight attendant. The most honorable profession that there is. Oh, is that right? I know what I saw. And there's even very strong incriminating evidence to back up. What kind of incriminating evidence is she talking about? We've already alerted the proper th authorities at our destination. Until we land, you will remain in our custody by the powers vested in our captain. I'm very sorry, but please understand our situation. Your situation? Your situation? I'm more concerned with mine and the direction it's going in. I'm not about to just sit idly by while I get accused of murder. Miss Tenero, is it? Yes. I was wondering if you might give me a chance. A chance to do what? A chance to plead my case. And a chance to ask what you meant by incriminating evidence just now. <laughs> to accuse a passenger of such a grave crime without allowing him to give a proper defense. Can the professional flight attendant inside of you really call this action righteous? Such a lawyer. You have a point. Very well. I'll listen to what you have to say. But be wary of what you reveal. I'm afraid you'll only look even more suspicious if your explanation fails to satisfy. I also do not have the time to deal with you all day, so please, make it quick. Hmm. Of course. As you wish. And also, I would like to not be handcuffed in a plane, so... Good. Very well, then. Let's get started. I know for a fact that I didn't kill that man in the elevator. What I don't know is what sort of evidence she has up her sleeve. But I'm certain it doesn't fit with how the crime really occurred. Hmm. 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 What did you see? I swear to tell the whole truth as a professional flight attendant. Unfortunately for you, Mr. Edgeworth, I am certain you are the killer. The scene I saw in front of the elevator. It was you standing there with fresh blood dripping off of the murder weapon. So, if you would please cooperate, we'll turn you over just as soon as we land. I can explain that. I have an... Uh, okay, that's it. That's her evidence. I don't think you could ask for a more perfect witness testimony. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Edgeworth? Not really. It's hardly perfect when there's a gaping hole in it. Hmm. Okay. Rebuttal. I swear to tell the whole truth as a professional flight attendant. Yeah? Is that a thing you can swear on? Tell me, what exactly puts the pro in professional flight attendant for you? Oh, I mean, I'm, I assume she gets paid to do it. She's not a freelance. 
like amateur. Oh yeah, I'm just going through planes on my spare time. Well, it means we are very professional about how we take care of our passengers. Services like fetching papers and responding to calls are done with speed and accuracy. I can assure you that I give testimonies with the same level of professionalism. I love how her hair looks like a jet turbine coming out the back there. But I'm sure you have already realized that by now, right? It's a bit hard to appreciate your professionalism when I'm the one under suspicion. And there you have it. My professional testimony is accurate and reliable. Unfortunately for you, Mr. Edgeworth, I am certain you are the killer. Do I have anything in my inventory? I have the travel wallet. It isn't mine, so whose is it? We have crime scene notes. We know that we found a body. And Sky Mall! We got our Sky Mall! Details, meals, movies, and the other services inside. Touch the check button for details. Ooh, let's read Sky Mall. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Flight itinerary. Oh, this is gonna be important! Meals, drinks, movie. Ugh, I have a headache just thinking about how that's gonna be relevant. We're gonna have to look at that in more detail. Okay, alright. Let's keep pressing. You certainly seem sure of yourself. <laughs> of course, a professional flight attendant can't afford to make mistakes after all. Perhaps, but you must admit there are few who can look at a murder with a clear mind. The attendants all go through extensive training and are always calm and connected. We even calmly serve you coffee, if you so wish, as the plane makes a splashdown. She's like, kind of tw twitching her eye a little bit. I fail to see how that would be the calm and rational thing to do in an emergency. Even until the bitter end, we are there to serve the passengers. That is the duty of all professional flight attendants. You certainly are confident. Anyway, shall we return to your testimony? The scene I saw in front of the elevator. Hold it! Yes, what did you see in front of the elevator? That's what I was just about to tell you, Mr. Edgeworth. Framed by the elevator doors and bathed in the light coming from within. It was you. Standing there with fresh blood dripping off of the murder weapon. This is where I present the wallet, which was definitely not a murder weapon. The murder weapon dripping with blood. Really now. I swear that was the grisly scene I saw before me. Thank goodness it wasn't a passenger who saw, or there'd be widespread panic by now. As I recall, you were quite panicked yourself at the time. Excuse me? You were scared enough to misread the situation and accuse me of murder. Nonsense! Professional flight attendants cannot afford to be that flustered. I witnessed the murder scene and am now listening to your defense, all oh, with a smile. Apparently you also lie with a smile on your face. So if you would please cooperate, we'll turn you over just as soon as we land. Hold it! I am not the culprit, and yet you would keep these restraints on me? Mr. Edgeworth, please try to understand what kind of situation you're in right now. And what exactly is my situation? I have the backing of the captain to keep you bound this way. We are within our legal right to restrain anyone who might threaten our captain mid-flight. In essence, you're in the same situation as someone who has been arrested by the police. So I am to stay restrained until I can clear up all of her doubts? At least I'm close. Her mistake shines like the silver lining on a dark rain cloud. And I'm going to capture some of that light with evidence. <coughs> okay, so... It's definitely... This one with the murder weapon, which she saw no such thing. I don't think you could kill much of anybody with a wallet. Miss Tenero. What is this with the yelling all of a sudden? Ob I guess he yelled objection. Uh, force of habit. Well, it doesn't matter. Miss Tenero, 
You say you saw the murder weapon dripping with blood. Is that correct? Yes, all that blood. Drip, drip, drip. Just like a Hitchcock film. Just, just recalling that scene sends a chill down my spine. Sorry, but your so-called professional flight attendant training has failed you. What? I'd like to direct your attention to this. Do you know what this is? It's a travel wallet, right? But it looks a little big and bulky. That twitch is really fun. The thing you saw me holding when I discovered the dead body in the elevator was this very travel wallet, Mr. Nero. What? Impossible! Now then, do you still think I am the killer? That I killed him with a travel wallet? But, but, uh, no, but I, I saw blood dripping from the wallet. I knew I did. As you can see, this wallet is clearly stained. But if you would be so kind as to take a whiff, mm, you'll find, I think you'd agree, it's only grape juice. Grape juice, the pungent aroma of grape juice and not wine. That's right. You mistook grape juice for blood. That's embarrassing. The murder weapon dripping with blood does not, in fact, exist. <laughs> no! There. That should clear up that pesky accusation. Wait just a sec. That is... I mean, even a wallet could be deadly if it was wrapped around something heavy. I demand that you show me what's inside. Please. She's trembling, and the tacked on please at the end. Sounds like I've got her. There's no need to look inside. Even you can tell from its appearance that it's light. No, I can't be sure of anything until I see the contents of that wallet for myself. Uh, she's a persistent one. I suppose we have no choice but to see what's inside. Mr. Nero, if you would be so kind as to open the wallet and check its contents for me. All right, I usually don't pry into passengers' belongings, but we have no choice here. What's in the wallet? I guess she's doing this. <laughs> Pop it open! It seems that this passport is all that's in here. As you saw, there is nothing but a passport inside. But whose passport is it, Edgeworth? I bet it's that handsome blonde glasses man. This renders your wallet was the murder weapon argument. Moot. Wouldn't you agree? Hold it! Please hear me out, Mr. Edgeworth. What is it now? Well, I was wondering, whose passport is it exactly? Um... Uh... Can I take a look? Why not? I'm rather curious myself. No, it's handsome blonde man with glasses! From the Republic of Borginia? What? The, the, this is... Acme Hicks? Just as I thought. This is travel wallet belonged to Mr. Acme Hicks. Mr. Hicks. Which makes it the victim's property. We're having a tie-in! Okay, wallet data updated in my organizer. Oh! You, you stole the victim's wallet? Didn't you? How, how dare you? You said it yourself. You claim to be holding this wallet in your hands when I found you. Perhaps I did misconstrue the wallet for the murder weapon. But it seems that I wasn't wrong about who the culprit is. <laughs> I, I, I didn't... Mm. As you claim, the murder weapon is not the travel wallet. However, it is something you stole from Mr. Hicks after you were done with the vile deed. I find it hard to believe myself, but your motive was very simple. You were out to steal Mr. Hicks' money, weren't you? No, I'm fairly well off. In case you haven't noticed, I'm wearing a cravat. You don't just wear a cravat when you're poor. You can't afford one. They're expensive, probably. So even though I don't have the murder weapon on me, you still suspect me, I see. You stood a 
up at the crime scene with the victim's wallet in your hands. How can I turn a blind eye and not suspect you of foul play? All right, give me your rebuttal. Here on this airplane. As you claim, the murder weapon is not the travel wallet. Press. Shouldn't that be proof enough for you that I did not murder the victim I couldn't have? Not at all. Oh, and why not? Because that wallet may not have been what I thought it was. However, it is something you stole from Mr. Hicks after you were done with the vile deed. Hold it. You think I stole it? Yes, I'm very sorry to say it, and I wouldn't usually be so rude, but it must be said. Yes. Darn yes. Mm -hmm. I never thought I'd see the day, but here I am calling a passenger a thief. Maybe I should put on a serious face and say it more directly. I believe you removed the wallet from the victim's personage. It really doesn't matter how you phrase it. What I'd like to know is why you think I stole Mr. Hicks's wallet. I find it hard to believe myself, but your motive was very simple. Hold it. Is this where I present my prosecutor's badge to prove that I have money? I don't think I have any sort of motive to speak of. I've never met Mr. Hicks before, and our only connection is this one flight. But that is more than enough of a reason. How do you figure? He was sitting in first class, and I think the implication is quite clear. I think this whole uh, plane is first class. You were out to steal Mr. Hicks's money, weren't you? Hold it! You think I was after his money? Where did that cockamamie idea come from? Present your cravat! Present it! Just go... Shloosh! True, but you are also a passenger in first class. But... I thought something was off about you and those deeply etched lines on your forehead. What? They're not lines. They're perfectly normal and a part of my natural face and not where I'm hiding my logic button under my decaying human flesh disguise. <laughs> I don't think I've ever met someone with such terrible countenance on a flight before. Terrible countenance? What do you mean? I don't have a terrible countenance. And that's only she. You have the face of someone with money trouble. She really is making a fool of herself, pursuing this line of logic. I should spare her and present the piece of evidence that contradicts her testimony. Okay, so it's definitely about the money. It's definitely, it's not about the money. Um. It's not the Sky Magazine. I think, I think we present our prosecutor's badge. I might lose a point here. Yeah, I lost the point. Oh well, that's fine. There's a contradiction between this piece of evidence and your testimony. I don't want to go against the word of a professional prosecutor, but I don't think there's a problem at all. I swear it as a professional flight attendant. Ugh. Ugh. Okay. Hmm. Do I have a way of proving that I have a lot of money? Oh, oh, is there money still in it? Let's open it up. Grape juice stains the outer cover. True, it was I who dropped it in juice. However, I didn't do it out of ill intentions. I feel like if there's money still in the wallet... There is but a passport inside. So there is no money in the wallet. Is it that the wallet never contained money and it's just not that kind of wallet? Objection. Yeah, that's what it is. I wonder if I might get a word in, Miss Tenero. What is it now? Miss Tenero, I wonder if you noticed the contradiction within your own testimony. What are you talking about? 
Simply put, as you saw with your own eyes, the only thing inside Mr. Hicks' wallet was his passport. Ah! If I really was after his money, then why would I steal a penniless travel wallet? Ah, but that's right! You, Mr. Edgeworth, you didn't know it was empty when you stole it! You would like to think that, but that's not possible. What do you mean it's not possible? There is no way the killer didn't know that the wallet was empty to begin with. Oh, and what makes you so sure? How can I show that the killer knew the wallet to be empty from the get-go? Um... Oh, can we check the crime scene? Because there's money all over the floor! There's a ton of money on the floor! If you would recall the crime scene, I admit that the wallet was probably not empty at the time of the murder. That's pretty evident by the bills and cards strewn about the inside of the elevator. Oh no! Also, the murder weapon is definitely still in there, I think. I think you've come to realize the problem with your logic. I would surmise that the victim's wallet fell out during their struggle. And that's when its contents emptied onto the floor of the elevator. I doubt the killer could have missed such an occurrence. The thing you're saying? Yes, according to your supposition, if I were the killer, I would have been going after a wallet I knew to be empty. And since I clearly was not attempting to gather the scattered money, it renders your argument of theft completely invalid. I... 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 Boy, what the heck? Are you saying the attendant's wrong? So that guy isn't the killer? Ha, don't believe it! Everyone, it's a trick! Uh, will, you all, will you all please be quiet? Mr. Nero. Yes? You lost your cool when you saw the dead body. Plus, the lounge was dark, and looking into the light from the elevator, it's easy to see how you mistook the wallet in my hand for the murder weapon. I take no offense that you thought I was the killer. Mr. Edgeworth. Thank you for releasing me. Now I kill you all! Psh, 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 psh. Oh, it's Borginian! Well, what is it now? Mr. Nero, if you could please translate, I'd be much obliged. It, it sounds like Virginia, but I... I don't understand any of it. There's another attendant on this flight who... I... I said... <laughs> God, I... I said that is giving me the runabout. I don't require an interpreter. I speak English as well. See, I speak it out of my mouth. You, the attendant. Yes, sir. I want this person to be under the arrest until we arrive at the airport. I already suspect this guy. He's from the same country as the guy who died, so he has more of a motive than most people. I'm sorry, sir, but what exactly are you hoping for? What is it you want? I'm talking to the like Please, I would like to hear why you would like me to be held under arrest until we land. You, how dare you try to waste my time? You were the one who stuck your nose into my affairs. I want to be spending even at least one more second with my precious heart. I have no time for other things. I know it, you are. I see through you. Insolent. Yes, I am pretty sure that you say it in English. Well, I'd hope that I don't dissolve in water, but I don't think that's what you would. Oh, he said insolvent. I'm sorry, but I don't think I caught your name. I am Zinc Leblanc the second. 
I'm a very wealthy man of the bon genius. But I am not an ordinary rich man. I am an art dealer, a rich seller of beauty. Monsieur Leblanc, what did you mean just now? Pardon? Uh, um, when you said that Mr. Edgeworth was giving me the runabout. I have to explain? Unbelievable. I will say it once and only once. I do not have even a second to waste. Time is money, as they say. Yes, and yet you continue to blather on. I saw it, yes, I did. I saw the victim go on to the elevator. <clears throat> Going down to the lounge. <laughs> it is at exactly six o'clock. Hmm. And, and what's the significance of that time? At six, he says. I'm gonna check the itinerary. Wait, you saw him at six? Ah, what's the matter, Mr. Edgeworth? He understands, I see. <laughs> Amiga de Dand! What time did you discover the body? Well, it was really after that patch of turbulence, so I would say around 6.15. Ah! Hicks was his name, was it? Then I saw that man Hicks was killed in the 15 minute time span. And the only person in the lounge at that time was this prosecutor. Yes! Oui! Um. Yeah, I was in my seat the whole time. Yeah, me too! I was watching the movie and enjoying a fine glass of grape juice. Sure need a lot of grape juice to really just mellow out these lights. <laughs> I was still eating. I still haven't finished, see? But I've lost my appetite. Yes, the passengers have an alibi, so you have no problem with them, I suppose. No complaint, I see. Not a single one against it. All right! I have no way of discounting what you have put forth at this point, but it wasn't me. Oh, uh, so you say, but do you have, or you say, the evidence? Mr. Edgeworth, are you really the culprit after all? I will arrest you again. Monsieur LeBlanc. I suppose you are quite certain in what you saw, and have to give testimony. Of course, I was looking at that man the whole time. He was playing with that annoying little um, small machine the whole time. Like a like a Game Boy machine. He said that you people call it in English. Yeah. He just make him a crazy with the click 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 playing the click game with the cookie clicks. Yeah. From that description, it sounds like some sort of small computer. I believe what Mr. LeBlanc is talking about is a cell phone. I have to say that I did see him playing with it quite a bit myself. A simple cell phone. A laptop or organizer, I can see, but that's kind of low budget. I hate that noisy little machine in his hand. I hate it. I hate it so much. I kill him! I don't know. I know. I know. Kill him. I know. Kill him. But I hate it! Not a fragment of beauty, only produces these ugly sounds that go beep, beep, beep. This is not pretty sounds, no. Anyway, I know what I saw! Mm. Mr. Nero. Yes? I was wondering if I might be granted permission to examine the crime scene. What? You want to examine the crime scene? If you would grant me a little measure of time, I'm sure I can produce the real culprit. Oh, I don't like the sound of that fox in the dog pen. Yes, I think that is how you say it in English. Uh, uh, close enough. It's fox guarding the hen house, and I believe my innocence was proven earlier. And if I'm given the chance, I can clear up all the remaining doubts. Mr. Nero, if you wait until we arrive, there is a good chance that some evidence will have been destroyed by then. 
I understand. Let me see what the captain has to say. Ah, this should not be approved! Please, Mr. LeBlanc, in an emergency, all decisions are to be made by the captain alone. But please wait here while I go ask the captain what to do. I will be right back. You are not planning to erase evidence when you are doing your investigation, yes? Of course not. Ha! We will see! Mr. Edgeworth, you have the captain's permission to investigate the crime scene. But what? Unbelievable! I am in your debt, Mr. Nero. However, there is one condition. I am to supervise you. Can you agree to that? Of course. I see no problem with that stipulation. You can be my gumshoe for this episode. All you have to do is be incredibly stupid and, and you know, arrest someone, I guess, if I need you to. It's only natural, as I am still a suspect in this case. I take full responsibility and will watch Mr. Edgeworth's every move. I hope this is reassurance enough that there will be no foul play. Nothing, Mr. Edgeworth. Shall we proceed? If you should... If you need my help with anything, please feel free to touch the partner button. Ooh, you're giving me a partner button already? That's... Oh, Miss... Miss Tenero, I... Uh, hmm, hmm. Okay. It's time to head to the scene of the crime. The first floor lounge. 